in our system. We call it a, f a free market system, but there's nothing free about it because in order to participate in that system, first of all, you have to have money. If you're not holding wealth of any kind, what your needs are become irrelevant to the profit-making machinery because if somebody can't make a profit off of you, your needs become ignored. So those people are already out of the loop in terms of being able to participate in the free market. Then it becomes a question of how much money you have. The more that I can accumulate in relationship to you, I can outbid you for anything that we might both want. Therefore, my needs get met and my wants get met and my desires get met while there's a whole subclass of people who aren't even having their basic needs met, you might be getting your needs and some of your wants met, but certainly not your desires. So that's where the imbalance comes. I don't blame the wealthy people for being wealthy. They performed admirably within the construct of the system. That's what they were told to do. A capitalistic system has as its foundation the point of accumulating excess capital to invest it into something that will generate additional capital for the person or profit. That's the definition of capitalism, is the accumulation of excess wealth to be put to work to generate additional wealth. So if my purpose is to use money to make more money, there's a couple of real problems with that. The first problem is I'm never satisfied because there's no tangible resource goal that I'm aiming for. It's not I need to get a house or I need to get educated or I need to feed my family, it's I need more. So when I need more is the goal and, and I need more than you is the bigger goal, we have this inherent sense of competition that never ends, which that creates that growth engine that never stops. I have to keep making more, 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 more. So then consumption has to go up and, and there's an imbalance and then the more people who are able, or the fewer people actually, who accumulate more money over time, they then purchase the means of production, they purchase the natural resources, and they're also holding the wealth, so they're the ones who get to determine what gets made to satisfy their desire to make more money and also satisfy their desires. So now you've got this whole upper class feedback loop of these wealthy people using their money to make more money and to make the things that they can buy because that's where the money is, and then down here, you've got this massive loop of people who were not able to accumulate capital, have a difficult time doing so because there's no res resources left for them to buy. There's no way that they can create a means of production unless they can borrow money. And these guys don't want to lend money to the people that they don't think can pay it back. So they're stuck down here with nothing to sell into the system but their own time. So every once in a while, they, they see this like massive smorgasbord of, of food and products and wonderful things going around and they just want to reach up and grab a little piece of it and in order for them to do that they have to get paid so they have to serve some sort of function for one of these wealthier people in order to be able to pull some of that money down but all they pull down is just enough to survive the wealthy don't find it in their best interest to pay these people down below enough to really thrive and become competitors because the whole point of becoming so wealthy that you can outbid everybody else for all the other resources is to be able to do that. So the more people you have trying to accumulate approximately more wealth than you have, the harder it is for you to get your own needs and services met. And it's not intelligent, it's not compassionate, it's not life affirming, and it's not loving. We forget the fact that there's living people involved in that system and they hurt and they need and they desire and they have the same passions and wants and drives as the rest of us. And for us to ignore that is fundamentally immoral. I look at the world today and I say, oh my gosh, we've got all these enormous challenges facing us in terms of energy issues, in terms of problems with agriculture, we're looking at climate change concerns, we're looking at depletion of natural resources, the sixth largest extinction event in the history of, of life on Earth, and we're arguing about what we can't afford to do. It's insane because we're worried about this monetary thing when all this other stuff is happening. And the real question should be, what can we, what can we not afford to do? We have to do these things if we want to survive as a species. But no one wants to talk about them because that interferes with the game, this monetary game of get, get, get. So what I want to do with this book is disrupt the game.